Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. I'm Tony Sparrow. Welcome to another edition of Seekers of the Supernatural with your hosts, Ed Warren and Lorraine Warren. Tonight, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to go into a very fascinating case to start. The case of Florence Viner, who lived in a haunted house and had some terrible incidences happen. Questions have been asked of, of us, of Ed and Lorraine. What do you do when you see a ghost? What do you do if you see a ghost? Those questions and many others will be answered for you tonight. I'd like to start with Mr. Warren, if I could. Ed, I know you're going to talk about the Viner case, but can you tell us what would someone do if they encountered a ghost? Well, Tony, it would all depend on the uh, circumstances, the situation, the whole thing. If you're in a car like Rod Veshi was driving along at 1.30 in the morning and a ghost suddenly appears alongside of you in the car, what can you do? Hmm. You know, and it comes so fast and then the uh, apparition disappears quickly. So by the time that you're trying to figure out what you should do, it's already gone, you know. Mm -hmm. And uh, some people, of course, would just be very startled. But if you're, say, a Christian, you're lying in bed and uh, something wakes you up and you look out into the darkness and you see a ghostly figure there, a woman, a man, whatever it might be, uh, you simply make the sign of the cross in the direction that you're looking at it. And you would say, in the name of God, is there something that I can help you with? Uh, you shouldn't really hold a lot of communication with spirits. But in some cases, you're dealing with earthbound spirits, people who are very confused when they died. They don't understand why they're not in that physical body anymore. And they're drawn mm -hmm. to the aura of a very sensitive person. And during the sleeping state, as you wake up, you are in a good situation where a spirit can reach you. Mm -hmm. Because you're on that same astral level. <coughs> So I would suggest that you simply say, in the name of God, is there something that I can do to help you? If it's an evil spirit, it will disappear immediately. If it's a positive one, say it's a, a relative or some spirit that's just been drawn to you, then you might get some com communication. I know there's been people that uh, have seen spirits of children, of uh, adults, and they get very frightened, mm -hmm. and they'll jump up and run out of the room. Well, that's natural reaction for most people. But actually, what you should do is to find out what it is, what they want. It's kind of like uh, this woman over in Torrington. It was her own husband that would show up. Mm -hmm. And uh, she woke up one night soon after he died, about six months later, which I think was beautiful, but it scared her. And he would be sitting right in the chair, just like you're sitting there. and he would say, are you all right, dear? And she got so frightened, she jumped out of bed and ran out of the house and wouldn't come back wow. for a few days. And then the same thing happened when she went back in again. She jumped out of bed and ran right you know, out of the house again. So the third time, her daughter said, Mom, why don't you just ask Dad what he wants or tell him that you are perfectly all right? Which she did, and she seen him get up. He was sitting in a chair. He got up, mm -hmm. he walked down the hallway, and she never seen him again. But he he was disturbed by the fact that something was bothering the wife, which of course it would be. He was trying to put her mind at ease. Mm -hmm. um, say, for instance, you encounter a spirit in a haunted house, right? And it's uh, one that's a very negative spirit. In that case, you're not going to hang around and ask what it wants because you're going to be frightened out of your wits. So in them kind of cases, I simply say, get out of the house yourself, leave, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, there are spirits that can do great physical harm to people. In tonight's uh, presentation, we're going to be talking about a house in Woodstock, uh, Connecticut, which is almost on the Massachusetts border. Very interesting case. <coughs> Mrs. Florence Viner who was, uh, I think she was Miss Connecticut or Miss She was, she Miss was Miss Connecticut, Connecticut one time. Mm -hmm. Very pretty looking lady. And she got married to an older man. They bought this old inn, mm -hmm. an old revolutionary inn it was, not realizing it, that it was very haunted. And soon after they moved in, they had the farm hands, some of them who would live upstairs in this home. And uh, the farm hands would go to bed with knives under their pillows. One even had a gun, and they said, well, why do you have knives? Why do you have guns? And they said, well, we're frightened to stay up there, Mrs. Viner. She said, frightened of what? 
they told her that you know the doors would open and close uh, the beds would shake uh, they were scared they would hear somebody running up the stairs mm -hmm. uh, they would hear what sounded like a fight between two men going on they would hear the clash of swords and uh, this would really frighten them so one night she was home alone and her husband didn't come home yet she was waiting for him to come home and all of a sudden she heard something open the door pounding on the door open the door footsteps ran up these stairs then she heard what sounded like a fight between two men and then two thumps well she said that you know she was so frightened she went in and she got her 22 revolver Jeez. she went upstairs but she couldn't find anything came down again and then she told about other incidents occurring where uh, she would be lying in bed and suddenly she would hear this loud roaring sound she said it sounded almost like a foundry Hmm. And uh, her husband wouldn't hear a thing. He would be almost like in a state of thantomania, paralyzation. He was, she couldn't even wake him up. Then she would see this here glow, uh, and it would form into a ball, electromagnetic ghost ball. And then it would go into a cigar shape, and she'd see this dark form moving all around the room, a shadow ghost. But I think it's important, um, Tony, to realize, or for our viewers to realize, like Ed just gave reference to her husband and how he was affected. Mm -hmm. That is very, very common. The majority of the cases that are brought to our attention, they will tell us the woman of the house. Remember that women are more sensitive, so women Lorraine, perceive things. Lorraine, I have to correct things. you. They're not patients, they're clients. If they're patients, they'd be in a mental institution. <laughs> what, what patients? You said patients, didn't you? No. I said